Good morning, this is Dr. Daria Brzezinski on Children Come First, and this morning we have Julie Savage, a teacher at the Tunkhannock School District for the Gifted. Uh, she teaches programs for the Gifted uh, around the school district. Good morning, Julie. Good morning. And we are going to talk today, we normally talk about issues relating to children, families, education, uh, health prevention, everything that surrounds children and information um, in order to help you with your children. And we'd like to talk about, I, I met Julia a while ago, and I've been uh, kind of hanging around with her and going to events with her and discovered the, she's incredibly talented, and I wanted you to know that first of all and start off with that and she is a very dedicated teacher one of the most dedicated I've ever seen um, she does extraordinary things now Julie does has a gifted class but the reason I brought her on today was because I wanted her to let you know about the kinds of events that are available to students all over the state of Pennsylvania and these events are not just for gifted students they're for children who um, any student can uh, participate in this. Am I correct, Julie? Right. Let's start off with um, Odyssey of Mind. Can you tell us a little bit about Odyssey of Mind, what um, it is? Odyssey of the Mind is a competition uh, that is based more on creativity. And the children are uh, given five problems at the, in October, and they have to develop solutions and present those solutions to those problems in March. Um, every year you have a vehicle problem, which is tremendously difficult, and I advise my children, since I have no mechanical ability, not to take that one. Um, you have a balsa wood project, which is making a small balsa wood structure eight inches high, and our high school was fortunate enough this year to make states holding 580 pounds on a 14-gram structure. 580 uh, pounds right. on a what? 14 gram structure. On a 14 gram structure. How, how does that happen? Um, it really is an engineering problem, and I know several colleges in the area have uh, done balsa wood structures, and it really is a preliminary ex exercise for um, engineering problems. And they have to develop um, what they think will be the strongest structure and the lightest structure. What, are, what were some of the other problems? Um, we had fine arts problems which were a wonderful problem this year was Shakespeare. They had to take a Shakespeare play, rewrite it, in incorporate ten consecutive lines from the original Shakespeare play, present it in eight minutes, have technical elements, um, dramatic, uh, uh, theoretical or you know theater techniques, whatever you want to call them, but they had to incorporate all that into the um, to the play. We had a customer service play which was sponsored by uh, a customer service uh, production that they had to present a product and uh, persuade the people in the audience to buy that product. All right. Now, so are those all the events then? There's five. Um, and then there was one other one uh, that was my fifth grade took that problem. It was an environmental problem. That problem I had coached by a parent. It was an extremely difficult problem, and they had to have new habitats formed for an endangered species that had uh, had problems with the habitat that it was in. Now, I from from your very brief explanation. Now, I happen to have attended the Odyssey of Mind event, um, and I can tell you from your explanation, it doesn't even come close to trying to come tell our listeners the extreme, incredible intricacies of the preparation that goes on. Now, how long is the presentation that the children are able to do at the Odyssey of Mind? They have eight minutes to set up on stage, do the production, and get off a of stage. Okay, and they come with props? They come with numerous props. I try to tell them not to bring too many props because they can become to absorbed with their prop work and not have enough time to put on the play. Um, th the incredible thing is that they have to work out the solution from October and you always think you have more than enough time with the production in March and we're working right to the last minute. They're staying after school with me on an average two or three nights a week. Till 7 o'clock at night? Uh, 5.36, whenever the late run is, and they're there, and they're, on their, they're in there on holidays, on their own. They do not get a grade at all 
uh, in the gifted program in Tunkhannock. Um, it really doesn't even appear on their report card. So this is something that they do on their own. All right, now let's go back to describing Odyssey of Mind because I was just in awe of what happens. First of all, it's an eight-minute event for each school. Uh, whoever partici- who right. chooses to participate. And how many different school districts are represented there? Like 30, we, maybe? We had such, right. We had such a large district um, that we used to compete in Berwick, and they had to split our region so that uh, we... It's a little bit better now that we're only with maybe 10 other school districts on a problem. Before, we were competing with 25. Okay. Now, um, so you're competing against 25 other school districts, right. eight minute apiece. So this is just for a one day event. So it's from, you arrive there. I mean, this year it was in Stroudsburg. Right. You arrive there at like six o'clock right. or seven o'clock in the morning, and I mean, it's it takes if you're from another part of the you know area. I mean, it might might take two or three hours for the kids to get there. Plus, they have to put everything on the bus. I mean, people have no idea what this entails. Right. I was just incredibly amazed. So you get to the event and. The, literally, the school that it was held in, every aisle and every space in that school is full of the children who are going to present at each one of these different events. Right. And everything is in the hallway, and there's just incredible amounts of parents and <laughs> participants and people moving everywhere. I mean, you people cannot even imagine what this is like, but to watch the events and to be there when you're sitting in the audience with parents cheering on their children, with schools cheering on their children who are participating in the events. It's just so awe-inspiring. Right. It's a it's a high-energy competition. And the other thing um, amazing about it is we do not, as parents or coaches, touch any of the materials coming off the bus. Um, they're responsible for unloading. Um, they have, go to their holding area. They call it in the hallway. They wait. They figure out their schedule. They do all their forms. They have a cost form to fill out. They have a style form. They do all that work on themselves. And literally, a coach in Odyssey of the Mind is really somebody who's a hands-off coach who's just there for moral support. Mm -hmm. I had one um, person ask me how I could bring four teams. And I said, well, you're not supposed to have hands-on. This is this is their thing. Now there's also, besides for the events themselves, there's also uh, an impromptu, isn't there? Right. There's the one part that people forget about. It's called spontaneous, and they do not know the problem that they're going to get until they get into the room. And that also is equivalent to 200 points, and it's a very important part because it could make or break them. They get a problem, they have to work as a team. And one of the problems this year that I thought was exceptional was at States. Um, My high school team was presented with one minute to think about a dilemma that they had to solve. They had to split the team into half. Uh, one half the team had to make, they had to make a device that would solve the dilemma and then come together with that device. And if it worked, they got extra points. So I said to them, what did you think of? They said, well, immediately we thought of the uh, war situation, whether we should be there or not right now. Um, one part of the team went over and made a gun, they said, with a sight on it, and the other half of the team made bullets that would be love, peace, and cooperation bullets. Mm. And they did, it did actually, they said it did work. So um, I thought one minute to think, they had to think of this dilemma wow. and a device to get themselves out of it. Wow, that's So incredible. I was impressed, but I, I didn't get their scores back yet, so I don't know if the judges were impressed, but I was. Now, you said the word states. What does that mean? Uh, if they make regionals and they win so there's at a, regionals. There's a right. If they win first or second at regionals, <clears throat> they they get to go to states, which is in Altoona every year. And then if they would to win at Altoona, they go to Worlds, they call it, in Odyssey the Mind, because the whole world is involved. It's international. And last year it was at Disney World at Epcot Center, and this year it was the University of Tennessee if we made it, which we, di- we didn't make it, but oh. it would have been at the University of Tennessee, which would it's a wonderful experience for them to, to visit these places. Well, I want to take some of this. It's very, when when you don't have a visual picture, we're, we're going to have to use words here in order be, pe- for people to be able to get a visual imagery of what really goes on here. Let's let's take the Shakespeare incident, the uh, problem. Right. And, and everything is a problem. So wh- how did they specifically state the problem for Shakespeare? What were the kids uh, 
what did they say to the what is it said to the children it was it was an actual pl- problem this year but it was very involved um i warned them when they took it, it was difficult but actually they fought over at the teams and i made them write the reasons why their team should have this problem so and then other teachers in the school decided which team should have the problem um it was they were given 12 shakespeare plays they could choose from and they had to rewrite a certain scene from the Shakespeare play but in the time of eight minutes they had to present somehow a synopsis of the whole play. Wow. So not only did they have to have that specific scene they had to present somehow and and, and along with that they had to have a technical element which meant something uh, propelled or driven by an outside force other than a human being, so they made a bubble machine that they had a taxi cab and they made a bubble machine for the exhaust of the, the taxi cab. And it was so remarkable. It was it was pretty clever, and um, they had to base it on a historical event. And they decided they took the Twelfth Night, and they decided the Twelfth Night was a very lively comedy and a lot of confusion and mistaken identity. So they decided to do it on the basis of the Mardi Gras which we had a little go around whether the Mardi Gras was really a historical event, but they insisted it was because they did the research and they said, okay, it is. So, <laughs> yeah, Excellent, excellent. So, so they prepare. Now, I know that there are other things that you, uh, other events that you participate in besides for Odyssey of Mind. Now, tell us what grades, by the way, are is Odyssey of Mind. Odyssey of the Mind can be presented in the elementary from kindergarten and it goes through, actually it goes through college. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. So there are events for every single level mm-hmm. all across the, right. the United States. We're Division Two, high school's Division Three, and then I know uh, University of Delaware, I know, competes in the balsa wood. Well, let's just, I want to give people a visual image of the balsa wood. Now, it's ve- it might be difficult to think of an object that's 14 grams with a hun- 580 pounds sitting on top of it, and it's only a very little tiny box. So can you give us a visual image of how you can put 580 pounds on top of a little balsa wood box? Um, it, until we worked with balsa wood, I had no concept of the strength of it if it's engineered correctly. And also I had no concept of moisture that is retained in balsa wood by your hands, um, by the humidity of the room. Before we go on, what they do is they use a hair dryer on the balsa wood structure to make sure the weight is down. And some of them Ziploc and vacuum pack their structure before the weigh, weigh in. We didn't go that far. But they they used a hair dryer on the structure before they weighed in for about an hour. So there's no way, you know, once you make the structure, there's just no way of testing it because either it works or it doesn't work. Well, what we do is we have a crusher board and we make uh, four or five structures before we go in. Ah, and okay. crush them, and then they decide what style and what engineering techniques they want to use. Okay, I see. Well, now let's go to the environmental one. That was an interesting one, too. The problem was, uh, explain the problem. It was so um, incredibly um, com- complex. Right. I hope I can explain that. That one, uh, like I said before, a parent coached that. I was lucky enough to have parents this year take over a lot of the coaching. Um, it was endangered species that had a problem with its habitat, so the children had to develop four new habitats, test the habitat somehow, and decide whether the species should, could live in that habitat. But they couldn't go on the but habitat. But they could not. They had a masking tape area where... I forget if it was four feet or whatever, they could not go beyond that. A lot of them used cranes to bring over the elements of the habitat and then bring it over for testing. Wow, that's incredible. If you're just tuning in, we are talking with Julie Savage from Tunkhannock School District. She is a teacher of the gifted. And we are talking about the different kinds of events that are available to students who are bright and intelligent across the state of Pennsylvania and across the United States. Let's get on to some of the other, um, and I, I'm not too well versed on many of these others that, that uh, you participate in. Let's talk about... Um, Model UN Day, what's that? Model United Nations, uh, our high school uh, gift is involved in, and I must say that they do recruit other students from the uh, student body that are not in the gifted program, and which is wonderful. Um, so we had 15 students this year. Um, it's at, we go to the one that's at University of Pennsylvania, 
and that's an Ivy League model in the United Nations. There were 2,000 uh, children from across the United States involved in this, and the country we had to represent this year was Israel. Last year we had Malta because we only had seven delegates. This year they decided we're going to fundraise and we're going to get a better country here. <laughs> so they, um, they selected Israel and they had to do the research on Israel and when they get there they have to divide into the committees for example disarmament, um, security, uh, health care and present resolutions and get up and speak in front of this large group of uh, students that they do not know and they also have to work with the other students to form resolutions that will be accepted so uh, how this is a one day event? No, it's it's four days in Philadelphia. Ooh. We take them. Wow, that's mm -hmm. a long time. That's why they and they raise. perform four days. They go on um, to nine ten o'clock at night. The only night that they have free is Saturday night. Wow. Mm -hmm. So um, th and this is around the United States Model UN Day. Right. And what's wonderful about Model UN is in the high school is because they can continue it in college. Numerous colleges. Uh, have model United Nations. For example, my daughter was in United Nations program uh, in her high school years and still continues to see friends at college and meet in different places. And in college, which is nice, they can form a team. They don't have to be from the same college. They can ah. form a team of friends and meet, say, well, we'll meet at Harvard and go to Model UN. That's great. How long does it take to prefer, prepare for Model UN? Uh, really, they they spend the whole year on that. Uh, they they go over diplomatic procedures at the beginning of the year. Then they get their country, and they have to do all the research on their country. So h how much preparation would you say? Um, well, they go on at the end of February. I'd say, well, they're after school twice a week. Um, they're with us in the gifted class during the day. So, also, we could take them if they wanted to. I don't know if we would have the time, but there are other United Nations programs. There's a competition at Lock Haven. Um, there's competitions at John Hopkins. Oh. So, if they really wanted to get into it, and someday I foresee if we really did have the time that some of them would like to do two or three of them in a year. Wow. Now, there's also a mock trial. Do you participate in that? Right. What's that? Mock trial, they receive their case in October. Um, so this is like a trial in, an, right. in, a, in a jury with a judge jury. Right, and, and they have to write the brief, they have to present it, and they go against other teams. And we suggest that they can't be in both Model UN and mock trial because they just overlap too much. Um, th there's a lot, there's the same amount of considerable work for mock trial. It's just as if they were an attorney and were presented the case and they have to write the whole thing. So does somebody give them the problem? They get the case. Oh, they, there is a specific right. case right. that is given to them. Right. And we're fortunate enough, uh, several attorneys in Tunkhannock come after school and help them with it, which is wonderful. Oh, that's incredible mm -hmm. for somebody who might be considering a position as an right. attorney. Um, now, where is mock trial held? It changes. Last year it was at Luzerne County Courthouse, and this year we were Lackawanna. Oh, it's an actually an, an, an actual courthouse. Mm -hmm. So when they present it, are there many school districts that are there as well? Um, basically, I think it runs around 14 or 15 that we're up against school districts. And how many days does this go on? J uh, two nights. Two nights. Mm -hmm. And you have to. Do you have a certain amount of time you have to present your trial in? Um, it, it's all regulated, and they have a total procedure that they have to follow. Are there try? I mean, are there participants? Are there, um, you know, everything that you might see in a regular trial? Right. Jury. Right. All that. Right. They present one side one night against another team, and then they go the other side. No, I'm trying to visualize this. Is the judge from? Um, it, do you bring in the judge too, or no, is that? No, they a provide the competition provides the judges. And sometimes you may have an assistant DA, or um, generally the um, judges or the jury are attorneys. Wow. And they're oh, scored. so the jury is an attor our attorney There's too. generally three lawyers or whomever the competition Wow, that's puts incredible. In charge. All right. Now, you also participate in Knowledge Master Open. Right. What is that? Knowledge Master Open is a computerized, uh, it's almost like SATs, and they're given 
a time limit to answer each question. It's multiple choice. They receive the full 10 points on a question if they can answer it in, I think it's seven seconds or less, they receive maximum 10 points. Wow. And this is also nationwide, but then the schools in Pennsylvania are scored against each other that participate. So it really is, it, it covers every academic subject. So there's no way to prepare for it? Um, we prepare, we have practice tapes that they prepare on and, and they work, it's hard when you get a group of 10 or 15 students and they're very intelligent and they all think they know the answer. <laughs> So they have to work as a team, so there isn't any... Oh, this any, is a team project. Uh, they have to work as a team to answer oh, it, so there isn't... There's no know. one individual. Right. So. Ah. And w s there, uh, when does this event take place? That you can register. They have a fall game or a spring game, and then they send you the results and your ranking in the state. Wow. How, many, how much time do they usually pre have to prepare for that? It depends on the team, how seriously they take it. Uh, it I don't know. I, you know, I've had teams in the past where, for example, last year I, their score wasn't one of the highest, but as far as teamwork and the way they went about it, I, I was thrilled. So to me, that's more important. Well, that brings me to a question before we start going into the rest of the events. Um, what kinds of skills would you consider kids um, do are um, learning from these kinds of events? What Rather than being in a regular classroom with a regular curriculum, here we have problems being posed by to the students. It's a multi, in my estimation, I, correct me if I'm wrong, a multidisciplinary, multidimensional, uh, multi-intelligence uh, way of approaching learning. Right. Uh, um, Odyssey of the Mind really delves into creativity and application of art, uh, music, literature, everything. History Day we do is total research, um, delving into um, interviewing and library skills. So each of the things that they do have uh, d different qualities about them. However, I'd say the, the one thing that's consistent with all of them is that the teamwork and things that, uh, I, you know, the creativity angle that may, they may not always experience in the regular classroom. Creativity and, meaning multifaceted. Right, and the public speaking. Mm -hmm. They really, at the beginning, um, even for, say even for History Day, some of my students don't even want to use the telephone to make contacts. So... What does that mean? Um, I have to lead them to the telephone, put the telephone in their hand, and say, you have to do the calling. Ah, they want and you to do it for they it. Want, they, ah. they feel very uncomfortable, ah. which amazes me, and even in high school. So they have to get over that, which is... Well, since you started talking about History Day, let, what, <laughs> what's History Day? History Day is a wonderful competition. It's research, and every year it's a different topic. Uh, this year it was inventions uh, in technology and its change and impact on history. Um, one of my students will be going to Penn State main campus with her project on roller coasters May 12th and 13th. Last year she went to States with her project on Levittown. Uh, so well, it's well, tell me a little bit about this roller coaster project. Her, ro her roller coaster project is wonderful. She started in the summer. Uh, she decided to work with two other girls because last year she worked individually and she won and went to nationals, which is at University of Maryland. And when she got down there, she said, no offense, Mrs. Savage, but I think next year I'd like to have some students with me. So um, this year she has two other students with her. So it's a group project. And when she got to competition at regionals, which is Penn State Lehman Campus, she was uh, she she was asked to donate her project to the Coney Island Museum when she's finished with it, which I think is just wonderful. Well, tell us what the project. I mean, you haven't really described it. It's what, what uh, about what is the project it's about? It's totally on the um, development of the roller coaster. Um, it's, it's the historical development right. of the roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, its impact and the scientific, the physics of the roller coaster. So did she make a model of it? No, she ha they have to make a museum display that looks like it would be in a museum. And it can have only 500 words of their own on it. And it has to be attractive enough that you would want to stand in front of it and read all of it. 
So it's a it's a, bit, a flat, not a three a four dim, it's you know dimensional. Three dimensional. It's a tabletop oh, it project. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that sounds exciting. Well, you have many other projects that you do, and uh, before we take a break, um, I know that um, you're, I'd just like to say we're talking here with Julie Savage from the Tunkhannock School District. She's a teacher of the Gifted Program, and today we're talking about the different kinds of activities that she um, is participating in and the events that her classes participate in across the state, across the nation. These are events that um, any student can participate in, but Judy, Julie happens to um, teach the gifted class. The, we are here at WAAT, 7.50 a.m. on your radio dial, and this is Dr. Daria Brzezinski with Children Come First. We, If you just tuned in to us, we do a program with uh, talking about uh, any many of the aspects that uh, involve our children are their education, their health, uh, family life, family living, and we are here interviewing today uh, with Julie Savage, a teacher from Tunkhannock School District. And um, Julie, tell us a little bit more about uh, before we go to break. Tell us a little bit more about History Day. I mean, how how are the children judged? Um, there's a percentage that they are given on historical content, and then there's a percentage that they're given on how it relates to the topic that year, and then how clear it is and the clarity of the presentation. So all of this is taken into um, a total score. And there are uh, many judges who uh, come and participate in the event. They judge the whole group, all the groups come um, No, actually I've been judging for them. I judge the high school um, group projects. There are generally three judges on that um, category. So basically I'd say there are three judges because there's different categories. There's individual project, group project, individual media, group media, and then there's individual performances and group performances. So I'd say about three judges on each. So I wanted to go back with what the kinds of things that students learn from this teamwork, creativity, public speaking skills, right. research, and if if it were possible, can any child from any school district participate in the events? They don't have to be in the gifted program, is that correct? Right. Certain school districts run the programs in different manners. For example, Odyssey the Mine in Loyal Sock area is part of their curriculum, built right into the curriculum. History Day in this area, Wyoming Valley West, does History Day as part of their honors program in 8th grade. And Dallas area does it as a History Day club after school. So you are basically, I'm talking to somebody here who is doing this out above and beyond the curriculum at Tunkhannock School District. Is that correct? Right. You participate in all of these events with all of these children across <laughs> the entire Tunkhannock School District. I am in awe. I want to continue <laughs> this because this lady is a human dynamo. If she <laughs> participates in all these events, obviously it's got to be after school, on weekends, and as the same holds true for the students, and nobody gets any credit or any additional money for right. this. Right. I mean, my, my, my thrill is to see how, how involved they are when they are not getting a grade. Well, with that, and on that note, uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break here. And you are listening to Children Come First, WAAT, 750 AM on your dial. This is Dr. Daria Brzezinski. This is Dr. Daria Brzezinski. We're here with Children Come First. That's the name of our program. We're here every Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And today we have Julie Savage, a teacher from the Tunkhannock School District, a gifted teacher. And what we're focusing on today are the programs that are available around the state and around the nation for students to participate in that are above and beyond, so to speak, the curriculum that have nothing to do, for the most part, for most school districts with their grades or anything related to the school district, but that challenges them with teamwork, creativity, public speaking skills, and uh, many other types of skills. Uh, Odyssey of Mind, History Day, Knowledge Master, Open, Mock Trial, Model UN, those are some of the ones we did on our first half hour. 
Let's talk a little bit about Science Olympia. What's that all about, Julie? Uh, Science Olympia is a team of 15 students and approximately 25 events ranging from testing situations, say on astronomy, rocks and minerals, they some of the events they have to make the items before going in, such as um, bottle rockets, um, battery buggies this year. And what's nice about it is they go into the event, uh, they participate in the event, and then at the end of the day, we receive the points and the scores, and they're totaled, and the team may progress to states. And we don't know that until the end of the day, and they can may win individual awards in their event. We have two Science Olympia teams, middle school and high school. So we take 30 children, and it's at regionals is at Penn State Lehman, and then states is Juniata College in Huntington. And you participate this in, in this every year as well? Right. So how many students do usually go to Science Olympia? Fifteen in the middle school and fifteen in the high school. I have one prevailing question. Do all the same students participate in all these different events, or are they different students, you know, some who no. are interested in history, some who are interested right. in science? They make that choice on their IEPs, um, what they're going to do for the year. Some of them overlap. Um, mock, mock trial and model UN is not a good combination um, because of the overlapping of time. Odyssey of the Mind and History Day is not a good combination because they cannot do both be gracefully. They could try, but um, it's just too much work. And both competitions are held in March. They could do, uh -huh. they could do Model UN and Science Olympia, mm -hmm. or Mock Trial and Science Olympia okay. because there isn't an overlap there. All right. Now, what is you? You talked about another one earlier. Stock market. What is that right. all about? Stock market game is out of Lee, and well, no, it used to be Lehigh University, and now it's Temple University is handling it. Um, it's a computerized return. They have $100,000 of money to invest in stocks. They can buy a maximum of six stocks, and they play the market with those stocks. They can short sell, they can sell, buy more, do whatever in a period of nine to ten weeks and then whoever, whichever team ha accumulates the most money wins. Now are they playing the real stock market? Right. They have to learn how to read the paper, uh, look at the Wall Street Journal, see what's going on in economics, what's happening to businesses, they can interview stockbrokers, whatever they can do. Um, my middle school plays a paper game where they send it into Lehigh and re receive a computerized printout. My high school plays on the um, computer on the internet so that's a little bit more difficult. Whoa. Well they are learning incredible skills and then you, s you have Earth Day. What's that all about? Earth Day we celebrate Earth Day by having the students do booths that they take to the elementary schools. In Tunkhannock, we have four elementary schools, so every year we we concentrate on two elementary schools. They do booths on Save the Rainforest, Save the Wetlands, Endangered Species. They had face painting, and they organize, basically the high school gifted class organizes the whole event. But my middle school children also have booths. But the high school, we generally have a chairperson that organizes the whole day. Well, in talking with you about all these different events that go on, I am just totally amazed. As I said earlier, Julie does all of these activities as well as the students for their own benefit. Julie does not get any extra pay to do this. <laughs> the students don't get any extra grades to do this. This is all part of the curriculum above and beyond the curriculum that they have to do on a daily basis. Is that correct? Julie? Right. So, you know, these kids are doing all these activities because they want to, not because they have to. And um, I, I, I'm just in awe of um, all the things that they do um, just because they want to. Um, now, do you find that you have to motivate the kids at all for these things, or are they self-motivated? Or They really are self-motivated because they are given the decision which program they want to participate in. Once in a while, somebody will choose an event, say Odyssey of the Mind, and during the course of the program find that they really are not enjoying it very much and won't choose it again. However, once they have made that um, promise to do that at the beginning of the year, I always say to them, you have to stay with it as a team member. You're responsible to stay with it to the bitter end or whatever. But uh, 
They really aren't because they're allowed the choice and they know the differences in the programs before they make the choice. Okay. Now, um, as far as so as far as getting them to work on their projects, they're all self-motivated. Is that correct? Basically, really, um, and a lot of them decide, not a lot, but some of them decide not to do the competitions and they work on individual projects, which is fine with me, but they have to have an end result, a goal, whether it's to participate in the Wyoming County Fair or something. We have gifted project night at the end of the year, and they have to display their projects or whatever their work at, at that night for the parents and for the staff. All right, now, what is this? I'm sure every person, parent, teacher, who is ever listening right now is wondering how you get kids to be self-motivated when nine times out of ten parents have to drag their kids kicking and screaming to do homework or a project. What is the difference here? And I, don't, and I really don't believe it has anything to do with, because you've told us that it's not just the gifted students who participate. What is the difference here with, um, you know, what's happening here and, and what students do on a daily basis? Um, I don't know. They're, they, once they choose the competition or whatever they want to do, they seem to be excited about it enough to continue and not have a problem with it even when we get to, the only problems they sometimes they may get tired of practicing which is human nature like practicing this eight minute skit it's like a dance recital like you come to a point where then because maybe because they're gifted intelligence the repetition bothers them mm. um, they want to do things outside the classroom that are different mm -hmm. they want they really do want to and they also like they also like going up against the other schools in a way of seeing, for example, in I See the Mind, the same problem solved by other students in a totally different way amazes them. Mm -hmm. Because, and also it humbles them, you know. They sometimes, they are totally humbled when they get out there. And uh, it's just a learning experience in life for them, uh, and I think that, and they enjoy, like I said, not only seeing the other schools, but they also enjoy traveling to the places. I mean, we, we get to go to Penn State Main Campus, Juniata, and, uh, they, and they have a good experience. Model United Nations is held at the Franklin Wyndham Hotel in Philadelphia for, for four days. Wow. They enjoy that. Well, I, after I met you and talked to you about all the different events, I went around asking parents ha if they had ever, some parents around the area and around the valley, had they ever heard of any of the events? And I can honestly tell you almost every single one of them had never heard of it. Oh. And yet, I can honestly say if I asked a parent about the football, baseball, and basketball scores, everybody could tell me what was right. going on in their schools. Now, what is it? I mean, this is just, ex as far as I'm concerned, the the talent and the skills that are being that are being developed in the students in these projects is something that every student should be learning in the classroom. How can we? Why don't we have these on the front pages of the of the uh, newspaper like we do, or or a section of the newspaper that talks about these kinds of events? I mean, does the media capitalize on these things? Um. I think they they do. I mean, uh, this, like I said before, different school systems are in the area are into them one way or the other. Um, generally, what you'll find is the school district will concentrate on one of them and pay coaches to do, say, Odyssey the Mind, Delaware Valley. Like you can name the schools in the area that are strong in the competitions. Um, now, what? So what you're saying is that. It's not. Is it just for the gifted students in those classes, or is it for everybody? Can everybody participate in it? I think that a lot of the school districts run it as a recruitment program. For honesty of mind, they might form a team and say, "We want an artist on this team. We want ah, so it's a not balsa the wood builder." Right. And they incorporate the program. Um, my students choose their own teams, mm -hmm. and they may, which is very unfortunate enough that. Um, the school district allows that other children that they can recruit from the regular student body to help them out if they need an artist or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it works very well. 
In case you just tuned in, we're talking with Julie Savage from the Tunkhannock School District. This is Dr. Daria Brzezinski at WAAT 750 on your dial with Children Come First. And we're talking about the different kinds of events that are available to students. Odyssey of Mind, History Day, Science Day, Stock Market, Earth Day, Knowledge Master Open, Mock Trial Day, Model UN. These are all events that I would uh, say probably challenge the mental and creative prowess rather than the physical prowess, which is what we're normally used to in um, focusing on our students and trying to have them become active in things. We have in the past, especially in this area, um, focused on sports and doing teamwork in that regard. And in this way, it seems to me this is kind of the antithesis of sports, uh, where children are using their minds and their creativity rather than their physical bodies. Is that uh, pretty accurate? I'd say that was true of all of them, yes. So if we folk, if we really, truly um, want to develop children who are intelligent and who are bright, shouldn't we be encouraging them to be, all the school districts in every grade, be participating in all these projects? Um, I'd say, yes, but I, like I said before, I think that most of the school districts, or some of them are concentrating heavily on one competition, which is... It sounds to me like to win, rather than to, be, to um, compete and have children develop their minds and teamwork. They, are, where they concentrate heavily on the competition. They are in there to make nationals, <clears throat> one way or the other. Now, you are a gifted teacher. What does that mean? <clears throat> um, in order for them to get into our program, they have to have 130 IQ, and there is no... Uh, 129 cut off or anything it's 130 and the middle school is lucky enough to have a program where they're not pulled from their academic subjects I get them during a homeroom period which so they aren't not missing any academics in the high school we have a 230 to 3 period which is multi-purpose period which allows them to come down and then they have a, a transitional program on Wednesdays where they can come into the gifted room if they want to get out of class to come in if they have something to work on. But um, we, I have to say that I'm fortunate enough that I have really good backing of the administration on, prog on programs, and that's important when you're running a program like this. Well, I know that my children were invited at one point in their lives to be in the gifted program, but I discovered, <laughs> this was in another state, by the way, in Virginia, and I discovered that gifted meant more work, not necessarily... Right. Uh, what is the difference in what you do? I mean, I know that, you know, what they wanted my sons to do was to to uh, achieve the unachievable, mm -hmm. like finish a textbook in, the, in mm -hmm. the year, as opposed to what the rest of the classes were doing. What is the difference in what you do compared to something like that? Well, it depends on the program. Some, is, uh, some programs in Gifted are academic acceleration, but then you have to look at it and say, is this academic acceleration constant? Is it consistent? or does it stop at a certain level and then they're back with the regular group? Um, if it's not, I mean, if it's consistent all the way through, then maybe there would be an advantage to it. This is more lateral thinking skills. This is more creativity. Um, this is more an extension. And also, in, especially in the high school, it's programs that other school districts throughout the United States, uh, they're having in, in high school and going to college with and on their records. So, oh, so this is on their record. Right. In high school, it will be on their record what they participated in. And sometimes, um, many of my students have said during interviews at college, one of the primary things they have talked about is their work at Model United Nations. And sometimes the colleges look for a commitment. Say you had a three or four year commitment to Model United Nations. Mm. So it's uh, definitely something that all colleges are looking for right. in terms of their students. Right. Now, you talked about the initials IEP. I, I have to say educators tend to right. segment the population by constantly talking about initials every time they talk about things. And I um, wonder if our audience, the majority of them, know what an IEP means in relationship to the gifted. I mean, I've heard of it in terms of the handicap, but why? why is it? What's an IEP? It's still the same paperwork as... What does it stand for? It stands for Individualized Educational Program. So it is an 
individualized educational program and they like I said they have a choice and it's totally geared to what uh, skills they want to cover during that year sometimes I wonder how a school can have academic acceleration uh, as a large group because the basis of an IEP is individual mm -hmm. how many children do you have in we the gifted program in Tom County? 68 you have total 68 children? Um, probably more, really. I'm trying to think. I'm in the process of doing IEPs now, and we have 60 IEPs, middle school and high school. How many? You have to write 68 IEPs. How right. many times? Um, we write them once a year, but then they have reevaluations, and incoming new students receive IEPs. I'm, I'm getting more and more in awe of you every no. time I talk to you. I, there is Between another. doing <laughs> IEPs for 68 children, spending all this time on all these projects, right. I want to know when you have time for your own Well, there is, there is one other gifted teacher, you know. Oh, there's two of right, you. Right, oh, there's oh, two of us. Okay. When I first started the program, um, the, the students were not staying in the gifted program in the high school. They were just dropping out. And now they do stay in it for the mo majority, of, I'd say 98% stay with us for the four years in high school. So they were forced to hire another gifted teacher to help me, which is, which was wonderful. <laughs> Define gifted. Um, gifted. Having a, I guess, a, I don't, I think of it, of course, intelligence, but having a talent, um, not always being the best speller or the best overachiever, um, but just being uh, somebody who has some, it's, it's almost like they have insights into things that are not always when we get into guidance uh, meetings, the teachers will say, is that child and gifted? Because what they're looking for is an overachiever, a perfect person that does their homework every night. Ah. And my, a lot of my students are not. They actually, they perform on the basis of if they like the teacher, <laughs> if they think it's worth it. Now, wait a minute. But this definition is <laughs> definitely uh, bro so broad-based. I can think of a, an awful lot of children who mm -hmm. are could be defined under gifted. Mm -hmm. And why don't we, I mean, is the only criteria that a school district has 130 IQ? Right. Is that it? And sometimes... That's the way to get in? Right. And sometimes they'll come to me and ask, how can I get into it? And they have to be referred by a parent, a uh, teacher... So, in other words, every child that could be in the program is really not tested for it, in our district anyway. Ah. So, it's... You know, it, I was thinking about it as you were speaking. Gifted certainly could uh, mean... I know a lot of children who have an incredible amount of abilities, maybe just in one area. Right. They're extraordinarily bright and intelligent, let's say, in mathematics, mm -hmm. horrible in English, right. can't spell a word, and um, can't take tests, yet they do perform incredible feats in mathematics. Right. It seems to me that these gifted programs tend to um, arbitrarily have a definition for gifted and talented, and we're missing a lot of children who might be in those programs because of our narrow definition. Um, right. I, I think that in our school district that maybe more could be tested um, to see. But uh, like I said, they have to be referred, so... It's that's the only way to get in the gifted program, to right, be referred. Right. And that's the only criteria, 130 IQ. Right. And there's, well, there's numerous tests that psychologists gives them. And uh, I, I really, you know, I don't know the exact ones that she does give them, but uh, uh, she certainly has been doing it a long time and has the criteria down. But, um, you know, you'd run the risk. Sometimes I see school districts with too many students in the gifted program. But um, I don't. Yeah, there's our school there's, district the is thing huge. Is too many? I don't know. Maybe not. What is too many? Wait a minute. What, well, define I don't know. that. What is too many? I mean? don't know. I maybe. I maybe am like I don't know. From one teacher, you mean? Right. I don't know. Our school district is so huge. I mean, I don't really know if the people realize that we have 1,100 students in the middle school. Wow. So we're second largest school district after Wilkes-Barre. So wow. We have a lot of students there. Um. I was trying to get back to um, what's the highest IQ? At, you know, I was thinking 130. What's the highest IQ you know, that can I be don't, tested? I don't look. Is it but I, no, I, no, 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 that I can know. be tested. That can be tested. I don't know. Is it 160? Is I, I think that I, I think 160. 
but I might be mistaken on that. Yeah, I thought it was 162. Well, were what would you? Was there anything that you'd like to um, tell our listeners that might be of interest? That I mean, I obviously don't know everything about Julie Savage or what kinds of work she does in the school districts, in the Tunkhannock School District. We're talking to um, uh, her today on Children Come First. This is Dr. Daria Brzezinski. If you're tuning in late, we've been talking about Odyssey of the Mind, History Day, Science Olympia, Stock Market Game, Earth Day, Knowledge Man. Master Open, Mock Trial, Model UN, all the different kinds of mental activities, uh, mental and creative activities that students can participate in events around the state of Pennsylvania and around the United States that are accessible to children, much like our sporting events um, that um, show us the physical prowess of our children. And um, I have Julie on here today because I wanted to inform you all, I'm not an in, in-depth understanding of all of these events and programs, but I wanted her to talk to you about them today because I think it's important for you to be aware of the kinds of opportunities there are for your children, whether they are gifted or not, in the gifted program or not. My personal belief is that all children are gifted and talented in some way, and I believe that your children out there who are listening, you who are out there listening, probably have a a child who might uh, be a history buff or a science buff or an Earth Day buff or, uh, you know, might enjoy Um, think about becoming an attorney someday. And these are the kinds of activities and events that uh, children can participate in, and you need to go to your school district and talk to them about uh, forming a team to participate in these kinds of events in your school district. If you don't happen to be in Tunkhannock School District, which is where Julie Savage is from, and you don't know anything about these programs, then go to your school district. Um, talk to your principal. Talk to your school district officials or your teacher even, your child's teacher, and ask them about these activities. Odyssey of Mind, History Day, Science Olympia, Stock Market Game, Earth Day, Knowledge Master Open, Mock Trial, and Model UN. It's an opportunity for your child to expand their awareness, to learn teamwork skills, creativity, public speaking skills, problem solving skills, and critical thinking skills above and beyond the kinds of things that are happening in the classroom. And if your teacher isn't doing them, then perhaps you could start organizing something yourself and um, get involved in this way with your children's education. Do you have a lot of parents who are involved, Julie? Uh, More and more each year, uh, which is wonderful. Uh, My parents are always supportive. And like I said, the administration is excellent. And the school board in Tunkhannock, very supportive. In fact, they want the children to present their projects to school board meetings. Really? Yes. Wow, that's that's mm -hmm. encouraging. Mm -hmm. Now, I had asked you a question. Was there anything, I I gave you some time to think about it here, was there anything that you'd like to convey to uh, parents or teachers or people who are listening uh, about uh, your perceptions, opinions on education? Um, just, Just a reinforcement of what you said about that there's so many opportunities and if you have the support of your administration, uh, teachers that are willing to dedicate some time, and parents, um, you can have programs like these. Um, one of the reasons I have to say <clears throat> maybe is that my, my two daughters are at college now, so I, I do have some time to stay after school, but um, these programs are out there, and they're, and they're, you can't say enough how beneficial they are to round out their curriculum. Win or lose. Win or it doesn't matter if they win or lose. It it's it's the research and and the skills involved. And the the I I have to admit to you that in going and sitting through the um, Odyssey of Mind and the different participants that were involved, I was so intrigued by the different applications students thought up and the different um, ways they solved the problem. Everyone had the same exact problem, right. and yet there were such diverse applications to that problem. I was just so amazed at mm-hmm. the different avenues that people took. I was also amazed at the participation of um, teachers, school board, superintendents, parents, and I began to realize, I sat through most of Shakespeare, a lot of the Shakespeare events of the different schools, 
And I noticed that um, when you sit w through one event constantly, you get a continuum of relationships to see what's happening in the audience and, and the different projects there. And I noticed that there there's a vast difference in the different school districts on the participation and the encouragement they have in their schools oh, with their yeah. students. And so... Uh, you know, what you said earlier about some school districts just focus on one event and some school right. districts are supportive. Um, what was the one school district that was, um, that had, uh, it was on after you, Northwest, is it? Northwest is very, um, their gifted program is very heavy into Honest in the Mind. They do very well. Yeah, they had. Last year they went nationals. They had they a huge participation. Well. Mm -hmm. Were there have there any been any Pennsylvania teams on on any of these events that have ever won in in uh, national and international competition that you know of? I don't. I can't say that I do know that. I I started the program when I taught at Crestwood uh, Gifted Program and was with another gifted teacher that got me into this. And the year that I did teach with, uh, it's um, I have to mention his name, Dwight Fink. Um, we went uh, nationals with one of our uh, vehicle problems. So sometimes when you have a good combination of two teachers, teachers working together, you can get the kids there. And so you're pooling your resources as well and your intelligence and your creative thinking skills as well. Right. It's right. But I, I'm not allowed to offer suggestions. <laughs> No suggestions to us, see the mind. Seriously, you cannot participate at all. You are there to just guide and direct the students in all of Moral these events. Moral support, I think it boils down to. Are you a coach? I you, mean, would you consider I'd yourself a coach? Really, actually, I don't think the term coach for us is the mind. You're not allowed to offer them any suggestions. You're not allowed to touch any props. And... You know, it's. I think it's moral support, and you can help them practice spontaneous. Now, is that does that hold true for every other school district? Does that? Happen? I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the rules. Those are the rules. We're here today with Julie Savage. This is Dr. Daria Brzezinski. Um, Julie Savage is from Tunkhannock School District. She teaches the Gifted Program, and we have been talking about events that are available for your students all over the state of Pennsylvania and all over the United States, as a matter of fact. Odyssey of Mind, History Day, Science Olympia, Stock Market Game, Earth Day, Knowledge Master Open, Mock Trial, Model UN. These are all events equitable, equatable to the uh, sports events that you might see your children participating in that promote teamwork, creativity, public speaking skills, critical thinking skills, and many other types of skills. Julie, I want to thank you today for spending the time with us, and uh, I look forward to um, participating and, and coming to some of your other events that your students are participating in, and hopefully we've stirred some people and um, are able to um, get some people to talk about this, maybe some parents listening out there with their own children. Is there any place that they might be able to uh, call you in case they have questions about any of these events? Sure. Um, I'm at the middle school in Tunkhannock, and our number is 836-3111 if they'd like to talk about. It's 836-3111, and you have to ask for the middle school. I do not have a phone, so they have to come and get me, but that's okay. Um, I'd be more than willing to talk to anybody about any of the programs. All right, this has been Dr. Daria Brzezinski, and we have been spending the day, the morning with Julie Savage from the Tunkhannock School District. If you'd like to find out any information about any of the events we talked about today, Odyssey of Mind, Earth Day, Science Olympia, Mock UN Trial Day, you can call her, Julie, at 836-3111. And we'd like to thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you again next Tuesday from 10 to 11 a.m. This is Dr. Daria Brzezinski with Children Come First for Children of All Ages. Thank you.